Hashem Hashem Nasa Venatsiach, we know this week's parsha is Pinchas. Pinchas, the great hero that kills the prince of uh, the tribe of Shimon, Zimri ben Salui, and the princess of Miriam, Kozbi. As, and as a reward, the plague stops. And Hashem rewards Pinchas, compensates and gives him the great merit of Beriti Shalom, the Treaty of Peace. The question here, all of the commentaries ask is, this is a hypocritical idea, illogical and irrational and inconsistent idea. Why? Because Pinchas just killed two people and then God gives him the treaty of priests and makes him the Kohen Gadol. We know that specifically from the grandchildren and descendants of Pinchas were the greatest Kohanim Gedolim. But we learn in Pirkei Avot, Aharon was Ohev Shalom Verodev Shalom. He loved peace and pursued peace. So what's going on here? It is very hard to digest this this contradictory idea where he kills people and then he gets the reward of peace. So the Khatam Sofer and many other commentaries explain that we have to understand the true meaning of peace. Shalom, what is the word of the root shalom, which is the most glorious and common of all Jewish words. It means high, it means by, it means peace. Shalom, the root of the word, the shorish of the word is shalem, which means complete. So therefore, shalom is something that is perfect, like the Torah is temimah, perfect, it's thorough, it's faultless, it's unbroken, it's complete. Now, we have to understand that we have, there's three relationships, the Gros says. There's a relationship between us and God, and, and the perfect person that lives in perfect harmony, the complete person, all three of these relationships he keeps in perfect harmony. One of them is Bein Adam Lechaveiro, Bein Adam Lemakom, Bein Adam Laatzmo. The Maharal also mentions this, which means a person must be perfect in his relationship between us and God. If God is not happy, it's a misconception to think the only peace has to exist between man and his neighbor, man and his fellow Jew. Bein Adam Lechaveiro. There are person, some people are not at peace with themselves. Bein Adam Laatzmo. That's the third relationship. All three of these relationships need to be complete, thorough, faultless, and unbroken, and in as much perfect harmony as possible. If they lose, they become broken and fractured, then there's no, much, no more peace. There's no more inner peace. That's why a person that is not at peace doesn't have shalom bayit, is it broken. Peace is when all the parties get along and are united in their mission now, Pinchas saw that when the Jews went and slept, 24,000 of them with the prostitutes, the low-life Midianic women, God despises sexual immorality, zenut. So Pinchas realized that our relationship between us and God had been broken. So when Pinchas killed, and in fact did not murder. Murder is in cold blood, but in, he had a very valid and good reason, Kanaim Pogin, but when he killed the prince of Shimon and the princess, he restored peace. As the Ramban very clearly says, God was so frustrated with the Jews that he wanted to bring a um, a holocaust 
ולא חיליתי, כליה, כליה, is to wipe out the whole nation, Rachmana Litzlan, God forbid. So Pinchas restored God's faith in the Jewish people, that they're not just crying and standing by and letting an abomination take place. He was proactive and he restored peace between us and our Father in heaven. That's why he deserves peace. And that's why the Khatam Sofer says, parenthetically, it says, Rodef Shalom. You know, Rodef has another connotation when somebody is wants to kill somebody, mu- murder somebody, has a Rodef. So if somebody's pursuing another Jew to kill him or rape another Jew, he's called a Rodef, we're allowed to take him out. Any, um, a person that is following somebody to to an uh, innocent person to murder them, any bystander is allowed to take that rodef, that pursuer out. Why? Because, so why does it say rodef shalom? So that's what it says. Sometimes to have peace, we need to kill. Like in Israel. If Israel wants to be softy and lefty and a dove, they're going to be eaten alive. Same thing here. Pinchas saw that God is so frustrated that He's willing to even ripe, wipe out the Jews because of their misconduct. So, parenthetically, the Gaon says, that's why it says in Pirkei Avot, the Gra says, three times in the Talmud it says a person that wants to be pious one place it says he should learn the laws of brachot. One place he says he should laws the, law, the laws of nezikin. Not damaging his fellow friend. Baba Kama, Baba Metzia, Baba Batra. Another place it says he should learn the pirke avot. So the Gra explains to restore and have a good relationship between you and God, you need to learn what? Brachot. When you say your brachot with kavana, that makes you close with God. To be careful and a pious in the relationship between you and your fellow neighbor, learn the laws of nezikin, damages. And then for you to have a good relationship with yourself and to be at peace with yourself and know what your mission is in this world, you need to learn Torah and ethics. That's why Pirkei Avot. And this is perfectly Pinchas, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, is always in the three weeks of mourning for Yerushalayim. Because Yerushalayim also is Yerushalayim. Shala, Shalem. Yerushalayim is that perfect city where it is where the divine Shechina, the divine presence of Hashem resides. Yerushalayim is that perfect city in the world. The most glorious and angelic and godly city. A city that is full of quality, purity, virtue, excellence, and faultlessness. And that's why all our prayers go towards Yerushalayim. That's why, parenthetically, the Sifri says, every Jew must visit Yerushalayim, because the citizens of Yerushalayim are so full of integrity, and godly, and upstanding, righteous citizens, loyal citizens to the Torah and God, that every Jew needs to come and experience, be in awe of the great Sadiqim and Kohanim that, and prophets that live in Yerushalayim. And again, going back to the other relationship, if our relationship, whether it's not perfect harmony with God, like in this week's parsha, if it's not perfect harmony with our neighbor, we backstab and gossip and destroy each other's reputation. Or, Ben Adam Latzmo, it says, love your neighbor as yourself, which means you must love yourself. If we don't have any self-respect, and therefore throw other people under the bus and don't have character, because character counts, and integrity to know our mission in life. And our mission in life is not to destroy other people's reputation. When you have self-confidence and you're not jealous, then you don't need to throw people other, backstab them and do Lashon Hara and Rechilud and gossip when you have self-confidence. So Yerushalayim could only be built with the same heroism of Pinchas. There has to be a perfect, thorough, faultless, unbroken relationship between us and God, between us and our fellow, and us 
and ourselves. We have to love ourselves. And if we have self-confidence and appreciate ourselves, we don't feel threatened by others to try to character assassinate them. And it could be, this is the pshat that the Pirkei Avot says, the world stands on three pillars. Torah, which is the relationship between us and ourselves. Avoda, serving Hashem, which is the relationship us to God. And Gemilut Chasadim, to do kindness. So, instead of ripping down and tearing down our friends with nasty wor- words, let's have baseless hatred and then be in perfect harmony with every Jew. Then we will be complete and then we will merit to the city of completion, the city of perfection, Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim means the Ir Shalem, the p- city of perfect harmony and love. Amen Amen.